Skeptics Review, The Bible, by John Smith. It's the book of Acts, chapters 7 through 9. Dudes, I can't take that Paul guy. He's gonna drown us with his spit over here at John Smith's place. Plus, it really hurts John Smith's voice to shriek like that and spit all over for six minutes straight. Is that meta, or is that breaking the fourth wall? Anyway, I distracted Paul for a bit while I narrate this video. So shiny! Hey, what's going on? Ooh, shiny. Okay, so, chapter 7. This Steven dude was in some trouble, if you remember from last time. They arrested him for saying stuff against Looney Tunes 1.0. The first part of chapter 7 is pretty much what John Smith would refer to as expository dialogue and or information dump. It's a bunch of stuff we've already read about that Steven is retelling for us in excruciating detail. Uh, here we go, minions. So first, God appears to sister wife Marion Abraham in Mesopotamia. He promised that dude a bunch of land where people were already living. God spake to Abraham some more and foretold to old Abe that his descendants would live in slavery for like 400 years or so. And he also told those dudes to cut the skin off the tips of their peepees. Eesh. Joseph would be sold into slavery in Egypt. But he got on good with that pharaoh, and Joseph had dreams and visions and stuff about famines and told the pharaoh to store up crops, which kind of seems like a practical thing to do anyway, but hey, I'm Satan, what do I know? Sometime later, God's people would be slaves in Egypt, and God would take away Pharaoh's free will so God could get all his PR. Looney Tunes 1.0 was a baby in a basket, and Pharaoh's daughter brought him up. Apparently, Stephen thinks Moses was a good speaker. Little did he know, Moses killed an Egyptian. People saw and called him out, and Moses ran away. Apparently, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses, or man-angel God or whatever. So fast forward a bit, Moses leads him out of Egypt, miracles and wonders yada yada blah blah. So here's my best Moses impression. Lord Yahweh told me to tell you guys that he was going to give us a prophet. And the Israelites made a golden calf and, oh this is new, apparently they were also worshipping the sun, moon and stars and Molech. Well that's what Stephen says anyway. Were you there Stephen? Huh? Were you there? Lord Yahweh gave making stuff superpowers to some guys who made the tabernacle of the ark and stuff. Fast forward to King David, who killed a bunch of people, only a boy named David. Solomon built God's temple, but God doesn't live in houses. So thanks for nothing, Solomon. How are those thousand wives and concubines working out for you? What's that? God says you're only supposed to have one wife? I guess the earth is God's footstool, literally and metaphorically. God was all mad because people's hearts were literally and metaphorically uncircumcised. And then, to wrap it all up, you guys crucified the J-Man, and Stephen was done talking. Some readers categorized that as a pretty anti-Semitic diatribe by old Stephen. I don't know, you decide. So I guess Apostle Paul was there, even though he wasn't an apostle yet. And in the Bible, he's referenced as Saul, which is really just the difference between his Jewish name and his Roman name. He didn't actually change his name from Saul to Paul like they told John Smith in Sunday school, which John Smith thought was really weird that God only changed one letter. Don't you think that's weird too? So they buried Stephen, I guess. Next, some dude named Philip made some spirits shriek at people and he healed some cripples. This wizard or sorcerer guy named Simon converted and followed Philip around and was witness to miracles and wonders. I guess they met up with Simon, Rocky, Peter, and John who were filled with the Holy Spirit. Simon tried to give them money and Rocky, who remember last video killed two people for withholding their money, got all mad at Simon for wanting to give money, which doesn't make any sense to me. So Gabe talked to Philip which explains a few things. Hello, Philip. Gabe Angel. I'm gonna lead you down this desert road to Gaza. So while Philip and Gabe were walking down this road, 
he met some Ethiopian eunuch who was an important treasurer for some monarch or something. I guess this treasurer dude with no balls, that's right, I said it, was reading the book of Isaiah for some reason. Must not have been a big Kindle selection back then. So like a good Christian, Philip asked this dude in his most know-it-all patronizing voice, Hey dude, do you understand what you're reading? You're not taking anything out of context, are you? Like a stupid atheist would, are you? Do you need me to explain it to you? Um, okay, I guess, Ballas dude said. And Philip, of course, said, Why, this passage is all about Jesus, of course. Wow, said the dude with no balls. Hey, can you baptize me right now? So Philip did. But then Philip disappeared because man angel God took him away or something. But I guess Philip kept popping up here and there in different towns, so it was all good. Getting back to Saul, he was making death threats apparently against the Jesus bunch. He was on his way to Damascus to go round up some of the J-Man's merry men. But on the road to Damascus, J-Man had a surprise for him. Saul, dude, why dost thou persecute me? Paul responded, who art thou? And J-Man responded, I am Jesus Christ. You need to go to the city and await further instructions. The men who were with Saul heard J-Man talking, but couldn't see him. Which I believe Paul tells a slightly different story in the epistle somewhere. Help me out in the comments below, minions. I forget where it is right now, and I'm too lazy to go look it up. So for three days, Saul was blind and didn't eat or drink anything. Does number three have any significance for you guys? So Lord Yahweh called this dude Ananias, who lived on Straight Street. Hey, is that like Sesame Street for Christians? To go heal Saul. But G-Man, Ananias said, I heard Saul is a bad, bad man. You all know by now not to question the G-Man, right? For some reason his followers keep doing it. God had lots of plans for Saul, and they involved suffering, of course. Ananias put his hands on Saul, and something like scales came off Saul's eyes, metaphorically, physically, and spiritually, plus the Holy Spirit, yada yada. So Saul started preaching, and people were all like, isn't that the guy who was making all those death threats against us not too long ago? Plus, the unconverted Jews were hatching plans to kill Saul. Ugh, are we done yet? Still half a chapter to go. So Saul snuck over a wall in a basket or something. Then he tried to join the disciples, but the Jesus bunch were real skeptical of him. Some dude named Barnabas said, man, he's cool, so they let him in. Wouldn't they have just been filled with the Holy Spirit though or something? I mean, couldn't God have let him know in tongues that Paul was cool? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like a Christian recently told John Smith, Yours is not the question why. I guess Saul got in some debates with Greek Jews, and they didn't like him either and tried to kill him. Meanwhile, Simon Rocky Peter healed some more cripples and told them to get up and walk and carry their mats. It doesn't say whether or not he healed cripples on the Sabbath like J-Man used to do. Remember in the Gospels when J-Man used to get in trouble for that? Also, he raised some woman named Tabitha or Dorcas or something from the dead. Wow, miracles and wonders, minions. Eyewitness testimony and stuff. You better believe it. And that's all for today, minions. Oh, look, I got some dinosaur bones left over. Let's see, put this one together, that one together. Presto, TikTok. Where can I go hide this? Oh, hey guys, what's going on over here? Ooh, shiny. Hey, minions. John Smith is going to be out of town for a few weeks, so no new video until next year sometime. So I just wanted to say on behalf of the whole John Smith channel, Happy Merry Christmas Hanukkah Kwanzaa Festivus for the rest of you. Oh yeah, and remember to gear up for the war on Christmas. Buy survival gear, especially toilet paper. Toodles. <laughs>